something I cook a lot when I'm in Spain. I normally cook it when I arrived tired and exhausted after a flight from London and then a drive up, you know, either over the top of the Pyrenees or from Barcelona. And this is something that is just so pleasing um, and can be cobbled together pretty quickly. And I make it in the fireplace because I love cooking in my fireplace in Spain. Um, so it's a kind of mountain beans. And because I love you so much, I actually bought the longanitsa back from Spain. So this is from Carnissima, um, my local butcher, who I prefer over all the others because they know where to get really well-sourced, delicious meat from. And as you know, it's only gonna taste better if the meat is happy. So this is the longanitsa sausage. Um, it's, you know, in a, a long style. Um, and this one's very simple. It's just got salt and pepper and vinegar in it um, and pork um, and a lot of fat. And they are really, really tasty cooked over charcoal, which is exactly what I'm gonna do now. So we're gonna take this outside and fling it on the charcoal because I'm not cooking in my fireplace today. Um, I want to kind of get a little smoke into the dish. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I've got a couple of green peppers here as well. I love my barbecue and this is one of my barbecue collection that I love the most. This is made by a Japanese company called Snow Peak and it's really groovy little thing. So the sausage is going to go on there and I want to get a really nice colour on both sides and the peppers. Actually I'm even going to lower this down so we can get it kind of going a little quicker. There we go. Good, those sausages. They're just totally delicious and they're really juicy and really well made and they've got lots of fat, um, back fat actually, um, interestingly enough because if you use the fat from the back it doesn't break down in the same way as internal fat does when you cook it which just kind of you know turns into grease and runs away so it's got you know it's got texture and texture to it. Um, so normally as I say I'd be cooking this over my fire hunched over you know, like one of those, you know, the guys who do the grilling and the little osabuki um, grills, sitting on my chair by the fire, poking things around in the fire. Um, but not today, back in London. Um, a little bit of onion, not too much. It's been funny how times have changed though. When I first turned up there, especially the local men, the elder local men, would look at me, you know, I'd bounce into town wearing my brightly coloured trainers that look like I'm a kind of play school presenter maybe a jacket with a diagonal zip on it and they look at me like they want to skin me like a pig at the Matanza who is that kind of weird tall guy from London but over time um, I get a much more friendly reception now to the point that my neighbour will even be you know bringing me things out of his allotment so I'm settling in there slowly in my local village where I live in La Buerda they call me the tall man from London I'm just going to crush these garlics. Okay, so those are just doing their thing. I'm going to bark them around a bit, turn the heat down and go and check my sausage so I can see lots of smoke coming off. Ah, <laughs> oh, the smell. Brilliant. The peppers have charred well. And let's see how and these are going well too. This is all good. What are you trying to do those in? I want to cook them very slowly. I don't want them to colour in any way at all. There's the garlic in here as well. Just, you know, move it around and get them nice and soft. In here, I've got a little bit of rosemary. And um, what, a, a, you know, in summer's days there, you walk along the riverbed and there's dried thyme and there's this, this kind of mint called poliomenta. Um, ooh, I can see flames off the barbecue, excuse me. Just raise it up. It's very simple, the mechanics of this thing. I love it. There you go. It's a kind of propping thing when you're cooking the barbecue. You lean one thing against another and, you know. The reason I'm using dried rosemary is to kind of stay in the mood of, um, of where this is, you know, where this makes me think of. In the summer, there's all sorts of herbs growing along the kind of the dry rubble of the riverbed. And I love going there of an evening. The sun is, you know, when the sun's calmed down a little bit, you really can't go out in the middle of the day in high summer there. It's brutal. But as the sun's dropping, just walk along the river and there's this local mint called poliomenta, there's um, rosemary, there's various types of thyme and sweet mountain thyme. 
and I bring all the herbs back and then just kind of leave them in a, you know, kind of on the shelf in my house. And then the next time I come back, they will be dried and I'll put them in their little jam jars. Um, so that's why I'm using um, dried rosemary today. Just a little bit, a little bit of dried chili. This is so simple. I'm gonna use a little bit of oregano or oregano as I prefer to say. Not too much. A little bit of cinnamon. Okay, so I'm gonna take these ones in and leave the sausage on. I'm not gonna skin the peppers. I want that kind of black charred taste in there. So in we go. And these just, mm, so delicious. They're very sweet. It is looking fantastic. And I tend to cut quite nice long. So this just goes in here now. I brought some beans back as well. Of course, you know, I can buy them in a tin in England, but I so associate walking into Spanish shops of just jars of pulses. And I knew I was cooking for you, so I brought a jar back with me. These are white flagellate. Glass of water. Just add water, but then the magic happens because within about 20 minutes, the leakings out of that sausage are gonna go into the water. You've got the taste of the peppers coming out, the garlic, the onions. That is very, very delicious. Okay, so that's just doing its thing. A winter variety of tomato, very popular in Spain. The Spanish love their tomatoes. And then I've got some turnip tops. So any kind of, you know, spring greens, um, whatever's to hand. So this will change. Sometimes I'll use chard, sometimes I'll use these turnip tops and they're very tasty. They're more than toasty. They're meaty and they've got that twang. They've got that kind of element of, you know, mustardy greens, but without the heat to them. They've got that slightly cabbagey element. They're very, very delicious. I'm just gonna roll those up and give them a shred. So you can see when, you arrive, when I arrive on a cold night that, you know, will be minus four, minus five in the winter. I've got to kind of animate my house by lighting the fire. I've got to, you know, scurry around putting, you know, the kids are staying the heaters on. But the whole place takes a couple of days to really start warming up there because the walls are very thick. It's a very old house. So you need something pretty immediately that's going to warm you and cheer you. So the fire's lit and then I get all my parts together and go and sit by the fire and cook and drink. You know, you start to feel good quite quickly. Because there's quite a lot of seasoning coming out of the sausages, I don't want to do any kind of salt or anything right till the very end. You know, a little bit of pepper. It can bubble away pretty quickly. And you want it to be kind of not too sloppy, but kind of nice and creamy. What's extraordinary is really that's been on there for what, Paul? Five minutes? And already there's some pretty intense flavors beginning to appear. Okay, and I'm gonna leave that for a simmer and then we'll finish it with the greens and it's that zip of lemon juice at the end that really wakes the whole thing up. And in go my greens. You could put stinging nettles in it. You know, some blanched nettles would be fine. They would be delicious. So really, once these greens have, you know, wilted, um, we're kind of there. So that, you know, from beginning to end, you know, all done in the fireplace, this is gonna take, you know, 20 minutes or so. And then, that all important zip of lemon juice. Not too much, I'm very excited now. 
so it's not lemony. But that little edge of lemon has made it go bing. It's very good. It does need a little bit of salt. Only to be finished with a good lick of olive oil. I'll always make this when I arrive in my little rental in Spain, which is quite often freezing in the winter, maybe, you know, minus three. You can see your breath in the air in your own kitchen. This is what I'll make the minute I get through the door. And, um, and looking at it, you know, makes me feel happy. It's reminding me of Spain and the fact that I'm just about to see my children. Um, it smells good, doesn't it? It just smells so good. It smells hearty. This is kind of, you know, this is good food. This is good warrior's food. Mind you, I don't think you'd be up to much fighting after a plate of this. You're more likely to be asleep with the papers over your head, but it's bolstering. And it's simple. We live in complicated times, very complicated times. And you cook something like this and it kind of brings me back to my lowest common denominator, the simplicity of life. You know, living, living an easier life, preparing an easier life. And Shut up, Val, because the minute you eat that, it's so creamy. Um, you're wonderful and the coming together of the onions, you know, the peppers, the herbs picked from the, you know, the dry riverbed. Obviously with this kind of amazing sausage juice mingling in with it. I'm gonna have a go at the sausage. This sausage couldn't be from anywhere. It couldn't be from Cumberland or Yorkshire or Dorset. This is unmistakably a Spanish sausage. And I want more and more. Mountain beans, bolstering stuff, something I make a lot. And I hope you've enjoyed that. And I'll see you soon. In fact, I wish it's actually, I'd like to invite all of you over to my house right now. And we'll all sit around the table, open bottles of cheap Spanish red wine, put that on the table. We can all have a chat with each other. Maybe that will happen one day, who knows? But until then, um, love and sausages.